in this lecture, we'll be creating our first unit test in AngularJS. We'll be taking a look at how to structure a test using the Jasmine syntax, and also how to use Angular mocks to inject Angular components into our tests. So let's try and keep it simple for our first test. Let's just make sure that when the app loads, scope.title is being set to the correct value. So open up the testing Angular unit spec file we created before, and let's start writing our test. We start off every test with a describe block. Describe is used to declare a test suite in Jasmine, and it takes two parameters. A string, which acts as the name of the suite, and a function which contains the code to implement the suite. So let's call this block the testing angular JS test suite. You can also nest describe blocks to make your code a bit more organized and to be able to test things in isolation. So let's add another describe block and call it testing angular JS controller. So this describe block will contain all the code for testing the controller of our app.js. Later on, we'll also be adding describe blocks for our other Angular components, like directives and services. The next thing we'll need is an it block. The it block is used to define a test spec, so a single unit test. Just like the describe block, it takes two parameters, a string to define the name of the test, and a function to implement the test. When naming an it block, just ask yourself the question, what should the described component do? In our case, our controller. And in this case, the controller should in initialize the title in the scope. So far, so good. We've outlined the structure of our test. Now let's start writing it. As I've mentioned before, the Angular mocks library gives us access to some functions and variables which help us add Angular components to our tests. The first one of these is called the module. So let's start by writing module and in the brackets give it the name of our app, which is testing Angular app. What this function does is basically includes the Angular module into our test. We'll need to include our app in all of our tests, but in the next lecture, I'll show you a shortcut so you don't need to write this every single time. But for now, let's keep it here. Let's also initialize an empty scope object, create a controller variable, and now we'll use another Angular mocks function called inject. As the name suggests, inject is going to be used to inject Angular components into our test. In this case, we're going to need our controller. So let's start by writing a function. And let's pass in the controller service. And in the inject block, we can now assign our controller variable to our Angular controller. First, give it the name of the controller, which in our case is testing Angular controller. And second, pass in our scope variable. And in this way, the scope variable that we defined here will be linked to the scope of the controller. So we can use it to access any of the variables therein. Now we can check if the title is being initialized correctly when the app loads. We do this by using Jasmine's expects and matchers. So expect scope.title to be defined. 
each expectation is made up of the value which you want to check and some condition that you want to check it against, known in Jasmine as a matcher. The test passes if all expectations are met, meaning when all expects return true. If even just one of the expectations in the id block fails, then the test fails too. So in this case, we're just checking whether the title has been defined or not. Let's add a second expect for the same variable. But this time, let's be a bit more specific and check what the title should actually be. And just to make sure we don't make any mistakes, let's copy it from our app controller. Okay, so now the test looks done. Let's start up Karma and see if it actually passes. Head back on over to Terminal and type in Karma start and point it towards your Karma config file. Great, we've had our first successful AngularJS unit test. Now let's see what happens if we change one of the matchers. So if we head back to brackets and remove one of the letters from here and save the file, back to terminal, and now we have a failing test. In the red is the name of the failed test, which includes the names of both of the describe blocks and the name of the it block. This makes it much easier to find which test is actually failing once the test suite starts to grow and we have hundreds of tests. Underneath the name is the failed expectation. As you can see, the test now expected testing AngularJS application instead of applications. And since this is not true, the test fails. Let's set this back, save, and now it works fine again. Throughout this course, we'll be using a number of Jasmine matchers, but we won't be covering all of them. If you want to have a closer look at each of the matchers and how they work, Jasmine has some very good documentation on their GitHub page which you can check out over here at jasmine.github.io If you scroll down, you'll find a list of all the matchers available in Jasmine and any other info that you'll need about the Jasmine syntax. One small thing to note is that this course is based on Jasmine version 2.3. So try and take a look at this documentation, because we're going to keep referring to it in the coming lectures.